now I'm Jenny Owens, and I've been skiing in the mountains for 24 years. She comes in nicely, skiing well from behind. Good effort by Jenny down there. The mountains are a great place to have fun, especially in winter, but there's some things you need to remember. These are still mountains, and the consequences are real. If you're not paying attention, then your day could be ruined. When it comes down to it, it's all about your attitude. Your attitude to yourself, your attitude to others, and your attitude towards the mountains. We've been dropping this cliff the day before. The conditions seemed exactly the same. Uh, I was the first one up, and as I landed, I just went straight over the handlebars and dislocated my hip. All it would have taken is uh, one run to check the conditions, because they did change overnight. If I'd done that, I wouldn't be on crutches for the rest of the season. Having fun on the mountain doesn't mean doing the sickest tricks you've just seen your favourite pros do. Those guys spent countless hours perfecting those manoeuvres. I've spent a lot of time competing and doing photo shoots. And I can tell you that often the most fun time is just cruising the mountain with your mates. A few seconds of airtime is one of the best feelings ever, but going too hard, too fast could result in a few months on the couch. Preparing for your trip to the snow is a really good way to make sure you have the best time possible. The best way to improve and enjoy your skiing or boarding is to get yourself fit before you arrive. Fit skis and boarders are less prone to injury. Skimping on your equipment won't save you anything in the long run either. Jeans and jumpers won't keep you dry and warm. It could ruin your whole trip if you end up wet and freezing. To start with, a warm waterproof and windproof jacket, some sturdy gloves and a nice warm hat, and of course goggles to protect your eyes. Sunscreen is also a must. Even though it's winter, the sun reflects off the snow, which makes the sun rays stronger than down at the beach in summer. Choose your gear carefully. Incorrectly fitted boots, bindings, skis or snowboards can make your day on the mountain a misery. Go to a professional rental shop where you can get your equipment fitted correctly. Then there is helmets. Helmets these days are light, stylish and keep you safe. No matter whether you're a beginner or a pro, you know, anything, wear a helmet. It's the greatest thing you could do for yourself. Um, you know, many a times I've cracked the helmet instead of my head, so wear it. You can't lose. different sports like surfing and mountain biking, there is a basic set of safety rules. For skiing and snowboarding, there's a code. It's called the Alpine Responsibility Code. It's the rules of the road when you are on the mountain. When you're on the snow, it's really important that you know your own ability, stay in control on the ground and in the air, and avoid other people. When you head to a ski resort, it's a good idea to take a lesson with a ski or snowboard instructor. It's a great way to learn and progress and it's a lot of fun as well. Earlier this year, I skied at just over 213 kilometres an hour. But that's in a very safe and controlled environment. When you're out on the hill sharing it with other people, you've got to be careful of them to provide a safe and fun environment for everyone. As you proceed down the hill, you must avoid people skiing below or beside you. Don't obstruct a trail or a run or stop where you're not visible from above. If you can't see them, they probably can't see you. I 
All right, guys, when I'm turning up the racing scene, I don't have to look up the hill because I've got the whole mountain to myself. But when you guys are starting out, whenever you're coming out of a trail, always look up the hill to check for others. And whatever you do, don't stop under a roll. When I'm training or competing in the Mogul, it's really important for me to know that my equipment is in perfect working condition. Same for you guys. Make sure that your snowboards and skis have had a safety check done on them and that you've got the right leashes or bindings. Also, when you're sitting on the chairlift, make sure to use all those straining devices. Observe and obey all signs and warnings. Keep out of closed runs and closed areas. Those closed signs are put there for a reason, whether it's due to lack of snow cover, rocky conditions or avalanche danger. Before riding the lift, make sure you have the ability and knowledge to load, ride and unload. If you're feeling unsure, get a lesson. They're more than willing to help. You know, in life, you wouldn't drink while you're driving, so, you know, don't drink while you're on the hill. It's just the same. When you come to the snow and you witness or you're involved in any kind of accident, make sure you call Ski Patrol. Another thing to do is stick around on the scene till they come, make sure the person is safe. The Alpine Responsibility Code is here for a reason. We should all take note of it, try our best to stick to it, and we'll have a lot more fun on the mountain. Skiing and snowboarding has its risks, but no more than any other sport. However, you should know what to do just in case someone gets injured. Reassure them you'll get help. If it's safe, cross some skis or put a snowboard upright in the snow above the patient and send for the ski patrol. Make the injured person comfortable and wait for the patrol. If you are not first aid trained, don't move the patient. If you are injured, you'll be taken to the medical centre. More serious injuries may need to go by ambulance to the hospital. Skiing and snowboarding can be a little risky like any sport, however with a little common sense you're sure to have a great time. Just like the Alpine Responsibility Code, there's also a safety code for the Halfpipe and Terrain Park. First of all, you must check out the Halfpipe and or park and check out that the jumps are nice and smooth, the landings aren't too icy, and really you know what you're getting yourself into. Park and snow conditions change every day. Unfortunately, I had to learn that the hard way. I didn't check out the park before I went through it. During that one run, I um, took the same speed into the jumps as I was taking the day before. Um, unfortunately, I um, came up a bit short on the bottom jump in the park and uh, yeah, got knuckled on the last jump. Smashed my heel into eight pieces. I've been in hospital for two weeks. I've only just come out. I've got a plate with nine screws in my heel. I'm gonna be recuperating for the next you know, nine months before I can get back to any sport at all. At times there can be many people in the park and it's very important that you have someone you know standing on the knuckle of the jump to give you the all clear signal so you don't land on anyone in the impact zone. If you do come unstuck on a landing and lose your equipment, say your goggles or your beanie, don't hike up and get it straight away. Walk around to the side of the jump, come up and make sure the jump is clear before you go in and get them.
Ski Patrol spends a lot of time checking the slopes to notify you of conditions and setting boundaries for runs. Steep areas will be signed accordingly. Take note and make sure you know what you're getting into. Don't let friends talk you into areas that you can't handle. Inexperienced skiers and snowboarders on advanced runs are just asking for trouble. There have been situations where people have blatantly disregarded signs that have been put out for their protection. As a consequence of that, ski patrollers have had to risk their own lives trying to get people safely out of these areas. If you see someone take a slide on ice, don't take your skis off and go down after them. The best thing you can do is call ski patrol. We've got years of experience in these conditions and the right equipment to handle the situation. Children especially should be rugged up against the cold. Only a few hours in conditions like this lead to hypothermia. If recognised early, it can be treated by removing the person to a warm, dry area and giving them a hot, sweet drink. But if there's any doubt, call a ski patrol. Eating a good breakfast, stopping for lunch and snacking along the way with the right clothing will prevent hypothermia. One thing that never works is that dangerous mix of skiing and boarding with alcohol. Alcohol will actually make you colder and will lead to hypothermia much faster. Whether you're skiing with one person or a massive group, be sure to make positive meeting plans. You can do it at the end of each run, at lunchtime and at the end of the day. It's a great way to check in with your mates and make sure that everyone's having a great time. The police and ski patrol are often involved in unnecessary searches due to thoughtless people who haven't stuck to their meeting plans. No one ever sets out to get lost, but as we all know it can happen and you should know what to do just in case. The first thing you should try and do is retrace your steps or follow your ski tracks back up. If you are unsure and running out of daylight, the best thing to do is stop and stay where you are. Dig yourself a snow cave, get out of the wind, get into the tree line and get yourself ready to spend some time waiting. The ski patrol will be out there looking for you once you've been reported missing. Mobile phones can provide a source of communication in an emergency. These days, many people report themselves missing directly to the local ski patrol as soon as they get lost with their mobile phone. In some cases, mobile phones have definitely saved lives. This is what it's all about. All we want is for you to have a great time in the mountains. We're here to give you a hard time. If we all have the right attitude, we'll all have a much better experience. Most problems are avoidable if you just take care and use a little common sense. Attitude starts here. on the mountain, you're going to see some people with disabilities doing all the same things you are, having fun, enjoying the beautiful environment. Be aware they're there, give them a little bit of extra room and make sure you don't ski between a blind skier and their guide in front of them.